Uh, Wait, before we do the intro, should we do our uh, warm up? Yeah, do our vocal vocal exercises. exercises. Yeah, make sure you turn the gain down just yeah, a little let me bit. Yeah, turn just the gain down uh, a bit. Just uh, right. kicking. Ready? <coughs> you ready? Ready when yeah. you're. How many you are? You are? I, I'm ready when you are. One, two, two three. three. Oh, oh my, my god! god! <laughs> ah! <That's dead>! My <laughs> Kelly! <laughs> what happened to my daughter? <laughs> And hey guys, welcome to... Welcome to to another episode of Just Two Boys. Just Two Boys. How do your vocals feel? Uh, My throat's pretty warmed up now. Yeah, I think I'm good. good. Should we start? Yeah, let's start. Cool. All right. Welcome to Just Two Boys. Picture of Kanye West. Let He's me see. Fat. Let me show you. It's okay to be fat. Yeah. Remember when you used to be fucking. <laughs> Yo, you would just breathe and it would just be like this. <sighs> if we did this podcast when you're like 40 pounds heavier, then I'd be talking and you'd just be like. <sighs> hey, don't find a new host, please. Let's, let's, find, let's put the. Uh, Let's chaps. If you get the picture up of Walid hey, when he was come a, on. shoot the messenger all you want, but when you got a bag that's got a scroll in it with your name on it, that messenger bag should be not should be attached to the pigeon instead, as they say, as the saying goes. Who says goes. that? Yeah, it's a old. Ooh. It's an old proverb. Okay, fine. I was. Hey, listen. He was. Thick. I mean, I was thick. I was thick. I still am kind of thick. I'm not really that thick, but like I'm I'm less thick than I was before. This man likes to talk a lot of shit, this skinny piece of shit. But hey, let's look at him uh, literally four years ago, literally. <laughs> this is like baby fat, you know? This is not baby fat. This is baby fat. This right here, this is baby fat. For those of you listening on an audio podcast, we have a picture of Wally up, and he's slightly bigger. If you guys are listening to this via audio, my muffin top. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Juicy. Mm-hmm. Thick. Mm. Sexy. Hmm. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. You'd be surprised. I would be surprised. <laughs> we're, we're trying mm. to ship this podcast to uh, different brands, different people, mm-hmm. and, and like trying to get guests. But we don't have a tagline. We need to think of something clever. We need to think of something that when you read it, you should read Just Two Boys. The podcast where you don't want to kill yourself in the beginning. Or you do want to kill yourself, yourself in the, the beginning. beginning of it. The, podcast the podcast where, where when you listen to the podcast... You come out and you say, I just listened to a podcast. The podcast where you pull out your headphones and your ears are just bleeding. <laughs> the, the podcast where after you're done listening, you question where, when, why, how you got to the point where you got to in your life. And how you fucked up so badly that mm. you are now listening to Just Two Boys. What were the choices that you made that led you to get to this podcast And why you made them, and hopefully after listening to our podcast, you'll realize where you went wrong in life and try to correct those mistakes and get back on life. Or just keep listening to more and more episodes and continue to fuck your life up. The podcast. Is that a good tagline? (laughs) I think so. Do you think that'll fit in the tagline? I have another one. The podcast where after you're done listening to it, you call your mom. Tell her you love her. You say you miss her. Right. Okay. That's a a good tagline. What What about people that don't have moms? That's cool. I'm texting my mom right now as we speak. Thanks, I mean, we mom. can't we can't be exclusive. We can't you. not inc- to who <laughs> orphans. T- you think orphans are gonna listen? Oh. We're living in 2017. We just fat shamed, <laughs> orphan shamed, mom shamed, mom shamed people who don't have their life in order and are trying to get their life set in order and trying to figure out life shamed. All in like within five minutes. Hey, listen. What if we got a pot? What if we did a podcast episode, and it was our dad's hosting? Just our dad. Just our dads. Ooh, that's gonna be a tough one for me. Yeah, why? <laughs> Gotta find him. <laughs> <laughs> my dad calls Walid, Mr. Walid. Mr. Walid, how are you doing? Oh my God, Mr. Walid, I like yeah, man. Sometimes I like you a lot. One time I don't like when you guys made that post and it went viral on the WhatsApp and all my <laughs> the friends, <dendo. laughs> all my India friend, all my family, all they sending and they saying your son is so bad. He's doing bad things. 
I said they're just two boys, and that's the tagline. That that's the tagline. That okay. <laughs> yeah, this this guy's dad came over to see Justin's new spot. Uh huh. Literally opened up every single cabinet in the house. Just open, <laughs> open. Just look. I don't know what he was looking for. I don't know what he was looking for, but sometimes when my parents come over, and I know some people might be able to relate to this, <laughs> there's some things that you don't want your parents to see. Right. I hope my parents, my parents for sure are watching this podcast, the, the but there are items. I'm not going to say what items, but there are items in my house that I don't want my parents to see because I just don't want to see. You don't want to have that conversation. I'm not ready to have that conversation. Listen, I'm 27 years old. I'm not ready to have but, a conversation with my parents about things that I do in my life. Not yet. But the one thing he pulled out put in the fridge yeah. is this can of LaCroix. And he said, what's this? My dad's not a drinker. My dad's not a smoker. He's a very... You think he would be? <laughs> you think... The way my dad acts, you think he would be pounding back a couple of old fashions <laughs> by the hour, every hour. My mom especially. My mom opens. My mom goes. In, my mom goes into my bathroom and opens up every little cabinet, every little tube of of of, of lotion, seeing what where it's made, where I'm getting, what am I using on my face, like everything. I don't know if a lot of people do this, but just, but my dad, he was going through the kitchen. And he pulled out a can of Lacroix, and he like literally jetted right to me and my mom in the living room, and it was like, hey. What is this? So First of all, I froze up because I was like, <laughs> "Fuck! What is what is what is what is here? What? I don't. I, I didn't get it because I got caught off guard. My brother brings my parents over, but he's like, "Yo, we're downstairs," and I'm like, "Ah!" So I have like, I literally have like three minutes to if there's anything there that I don't want my parents to see, I have to clean it up. And so first, I had an initial fear, and I was like, "Oh God, what was left behind?" Yo, I was so ready to be like, "That's mine." <laughs> Just like take the blame for you? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Mr. Wally, it's mine. Oh, God. So my dad points his can and he's like, what is this? And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I think it's a can of beer. I'm sweating balls. My mom is looking at me. She's also like. Yo, because he was literally like, what is this? Yeah, he like literally brought to me and he's like, what the hell is this? Look at me in my face when I'm fucking talking to you, bitch. Son of my bitch. And I was like, don't call him. What is, why are you calling your mom? Anyways. Points his can at me, and I look at it, and I go, oh, that's a LaCroix. And I'm like, this just, it's just, <laughs> okay, swear to God, I didn't even finish what I said. I was like, it's just sparkling water. And my mom just butted, and she's like, it's sparkling water. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Your mom didn't even know what mom, it was. My mom didn't even let me finish my sentence of me saying it's sparkling water. I'm like, dad, it's just sparkling water. And my mom's like, it's sparkling water. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's sparkling water. He's, he's my good, he's a good boy. He's a good son. Mom. <laughs> my mom was my mom was twice as scared as I was, cause a she didn't, my, mom, my mom didn't want to have to deal with a the disappointment of me f like finding something for me and then b <laughs> having to explain to my dad what it was then c my dad having to probably blame my mom's like you my you you are ruining all my sons all the all my three sons you have ruined all of them. And then anytime you'll find proof, he this is like this is like great valid proof. So my mom had more stake in this than I did. <laughs> so my mom didn't let me finish my sentence. But I was like, Dad, it's just sparkly water. She's it's just sparkly, sparkly water. He's a good kid. He's a good boy. I so love him. Oh, I love him so much. He's my best she friend. Me too. <laughs> she, 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 she brought Wally over. She kissed Wally. She brought me over. She kissed Wally. And my dad was still standing there. And he's like, mm, okay. And then he popped the can. Just to test. I don't even know why he'd want to test it. He pops a can and he took a slip and he was like, oh, this is the most disgusting thing. Yeah, he hated it. He dubbed the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right so away. anyways, this episode is sponsored by LaCroix. What Try a, it out. What a waste My of dad a loves it. LaCroix. It was a waste of God. My dad didn't finish it and he just, yeah, he threw it out. And I was, was like, good. dude, I could have mixed this. With alcohol, <laughs> with fucking booze, bitch. <laughs> yeah, my parents are watching this. I don't. Yo, they even understand. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking. Do you have a dad story? Do I, um, what do you mean a dad story? Uh, because you know, just to fit the theme of the podcast. Yeah, I got, I got, a I got a really good dad story. Tell me your dad story. All right. So one time, my dad was like, "Hey, I'm g never gonna see you again. See you later." And then he never came back. It was the craziest thing. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, you didn't have to tell that story. You know. What do you mean? I mean, we're just trying to keep it. It was a fun dad story. Well, well just because we have a we have a certain guest on the podcast today that's, you know, people refer to him as a something dad. Oh. So I thought I would tell a dad story. You tell a dad story. But you're yeah, I thought my dad story is pretty fine. No, you, 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 you just derailed this whole podcast. Like, it was going well. There's good vibes, laughs, energy, good energy, good positive I vibrations. Thought, I thought my story was fine. Um, 
Are you okay? <laughs> Please help me. <coughs> we can talk. Uh, we'll talk after. I mean, I'll I'll find you someone to talk to after. Thank you. So. Speaking about dads, we have a dad here today. We have a and it's not it's not my dad. It's, it's not his dad. It was definitely not your dad. Okay. <laughs> It could be, it could be my dad. It's not my dad. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. There's no fucking way that it's your dad. <laughs> Why are we laughing at this? This is evil. It's okay. I'm good at hiding my problems. He, he is. Smiles. He's really good at hiding. Cry, he's crying. He's tearing internally, up. Internally, I'm fucking he's, dead. He's, he's, ah, fucking he's banging his head <laughs> against the wall. He's ripping out his hair, crying. Why won't anybody understand me? But on the outside, he's like, ha ha, I'm hey, lead. I want to lead. Hey. What's good? Ah, it's boy. <laughs> oh, this, yo, this, this is emoji. my favorite emoji, this one. That, that, is, that emoji is Waleed. Or this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what would be my emoji? And, hey, listen, don't say the turban and the beard. Uh, no, I wasn't going to say that one. Probably the girl who's going like this. <laughs> the bitch who's like. The one in the red dress? Yeah. That's me? <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why. You're why? Just, you're so graceful like her. That is the nicest. That is the only nicest thing you've ever said to me. Hey, thanks, man. And I don't even know if it's nice. <laughs> I just, I'm like, okay. I mean, there's so many other graceful emo- emojis that you could have uh, attributed one. me. T- the surfer. Oh yeah, true. He's just, like, he's just surfing. He's killing it. That's my favorite. That was my favorite emoji as of recently. But now my favorite emoji, right now, is this guy. Oh, the one who's like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just you can my use it. Dad. You can use it in so many contexts. No, no, so no. So we have a dad here today. We do have a dad on the show today. Uh, this dad is not only just the dad of his children. Mm-hmm. Uh, God bless his children. God bless his sweet uh, children. Not just our dad, which he's not. He's everyone's. He's dad. everyone's dad. Yeah. He's n- he's not uh, he's not just limited to one dad. He's everyone's dad. It's a, poly- a polygamous relationship. It's a poly- <laughs> He's he's just spunked out children <laughs> everywhere in every which corner of the world. Just spunked them out. One spunk, two spunk, three spunk, four. Here's my kid. Here's Is some the more. Door. Oh. Here's the door. I don't know. Like he's leaving his kid. <laughs> let's just Yo, not. I'm so let's, glad yeah, let's not. Get, let's just. Let's, let, whenever we talk about dads, let's just leave it to me. All right, you can right. talk about moms. But first, let's go to a break. <laughs> Is this a TV show or a podcast? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. We haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Just Me, Rana, and I'm running for candidate of world president worldwide. The guy that runs all of your worlds. And I'm the guy to do it because I know a world when I see it. This advertisement was brought to you and paid for by Just Me's dad. His his dad paid for it. He loves his son. <laughs> Vote for me to be your world leader, because who would have want a name like Muhammad running the world? <laughs> this ad was endorsed by Walid Muhammad and the Walid Muhammad Foundation for Walid Muhammad. Hi. I might seem like a small town little boy with a peach in his hand and a shoe on his hand. But rest assert, I'll have you know. That I'm the best world leader candidate that your filthy little palms will get their hands on. This advertisement was brought to you and paid for by Just Me's Dad. If you vote for me, I'll give back to the community by volunteering at local pet shelters like cats. I love touching pussy. Mmm. Sweet, sweet kitty. This ad was endorsed by Wally Bobbitt. Guys, just two boys. Here we are. And uh, we've got a very special guest today. Some of you may know him as the Sixth Dad. Some of you may know him as Norm Kelly. But we like to call him Norm Kelly. <laughs> right? That, is that was that a good? That was a great introduction, right? God damn it! I work on it. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, Norm, I think myself and even Waleed had a had a question. Waleed, you've grown up in the United States of America. Yes, almost. All my life, I and believe. your experiences with politicians in and around Norm's age are a little bit different, aren't they? Very different. Yeah. Very different. Uh, I'm just more surprised how you are a white male politician and you're not racist. How do you do it, Norm? Yeah. How? What's the secret? Well, I don't think there. I don't think it is a secret right. that you don't judge people mm-hmm. uh, through uh, their identity. A cultural identity uh, up front, because if you do that, 
Man, you're left out of so much that goes on in this world. Too much. You know, so, Norm, are you telling me that if, if there was a protest that happened in Canada and a supremacist group were to come out, you would condemn them? And you would condemn, you would condemn a hate group? Is that what you're trying to say, Norm? Listen, uh, my, uh, my father joined the Royal Canadian Air Force uh, in the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, surprised the hell out of my mom when he knocked on the door to say, hey, listen, I've quit my job and uh, have uh, recently joined the, uh, the uh, armed forces. And I asked him later in life, uh, when, after he had retired, why did you do that? And he said, Hitler, Nazism had to be stopped, and I wanted to be among the guys that stopped them. Wow. Yeah. Norm, do you get confused by that? Do you do you look at politicians in the in the in the United States that may have grown up in the same generation that you have? What do you think is the reason they are the way they are? Well, my background is academic, and I took history at the undergraduate, master's, and doctoral level, so I approach that question from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I grew up. I'm the last of my generation that grew up inside the British Empire. You were part of this vast international empire, and that empire was multicultural. Yeah. You know, the boys that defended Hong Kong were from Winnipeg. Mm. So um, I think Canadians, and certainly myself, felt that that was natural, that multiculturalism was natural. Yeah. The Americans, on the other hand, have had a different historical perspective. Mm -hmm. After they left the family, after they tromped out of the house and mm -hmm. slammed the door. Trumped. <laughs> <laughs> they, I like that word. <laughs> they, I don't know why. Uh, and their concept of themselves was quite, quite new. Uh, they thought that they were uh, a new people, a people who had never been seen before historically. And if you joined them, it didn't matter where you came from, mm -hmm. uh, you were transformed uh, into an American. Mm -hmm. So a very much an inward looking social order mm -hmm. um, that had homogeneity mm -hmm. at its core. Mm -hmm. That you must be like them. And they started out as European mm -hmm. uh, and white. Mm -hmm. uh, and the multiculturalism that has emerged in the last decade or two has puzzled them and as well as angered some of them. So but why is that? Is it, aren't a lot of them, don't a lot of them have British origins as well? I, listen, they stopped being British at the time of the revolution and became very proudly Americans, a revolutionary new. Uh, I know nothing uh, about America and American Revolution. I played Assassin's Creed, <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 guy the with the Mades one. Yeah, the game. That's yeah. where you get all your history that's from. Get, I, that's honestly where I'm, I was like, I played Assassin's Creed, and I was like, oh, so this is what happened. Like that's I because we, we didn't learn. We learned about Canadian history. Like, do you know much about Canadian history, Wally? Barely. I wish I knew. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people think Canadian history is dull and boring, and, mm -hmm. and uh, thankfully it is. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I really, I really, really admire about you, and I'm going to be plainly blunt and honest, is the first time we met was when we did that series where we drove around in a car and asked you a bunch of questions. What do you think about, uh, what do you think about this whip here? Whoa. Yeah, right? I like it. Now, I was a bit skeptical. Of, of norm here because just like any politician I was like yo this guy I don't know what like you know you have an internet presence you have a pol political presence but I was like what is this in person in persona in my face presence like and one thing that I can genuinely and, and honestly say is like the, the sense of humor that you have that you portray online is, is, is typically you're that guy like you are genuinely that guy you know what I mean <laughs> That's like so rare yeah you know I am um... Uh, from time to time, I meet uh, uh, guys, girls that I went to school with, and um, you some say, of them. Hi, your face. <laughs> but, you know, the uh, some of them say, "I'm really surprised that you're in politics." Yeah. And uh, when I ask them why are they surprised, they'll say, "Well, you know, in class you were the scamp, like you were the, the guy that could see humor in what the uh, the teacher was yeah, saying I or others, and totally could play against that." Yeah. And I I got to tell you, there are times when I'm in schools um, as the authority figure, mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting there going, who, yeah. would, who would ever believe this? <laughs> <laughs> How did I get here? Oh my God, I can't believe they all bought it. It all happened so fast. <laughs> that, I think that's uh, yeah. such an important 
uh, characteristic to have. Um, and, and I think that's why you trans- transcended into into a generation that didn't really care about... Nobody pays attention to local politics. And nobody pays attention... Like if you, so, rarely people pay attention to like pro- a provincial level. And then there's people that obviously pay attention on a federal level. But you've got people engaged on like a municipal level, on like a city level, which is something that is so rare, something that's never happened before. Like, yo, I grew up in Guelph, and I, I don't know anything about anything that was happening in Guelph. Even tweeting about potholes is like so interesting. To yo, me. I, he's the only politician. <laughs> he's the only po- and, that, that, and it gets him filled. Gets him done. And, he gets him filled. And, you're, and, you, and the fact that you tweet about how many potholes were filled, I'm like, oh my God. A lot, a lot of people follow you that don't even live in Toronto. And I feel like you get praise from a lot of people like, hey, that's great. Hey, listen, I live in Wisconsin. And I think this is a great... Well, you know, my dad, uh, my dad followed politics really closely. You know, I, uh, I remember being seven and eight years of age and reading the newspaper of the day from mm-hmm. front cover to back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in discussions with my dad, the expectation uh, was that uh, politicians serve the people and not, not the reverse, that you weren't above them, you were with them you were among them Mm -hmm. my dad was a very egalitarian sort of guy uh handsome as hell well liked uh very a a social a social animal Mm -hmm. uh and uh i don't know maybe osmotically i sort of picked up a lot of that stuff from him you know cities uh in in the 21st century is where it's at Mm. Uh, that's where the uh, challenges lie and that's where the opportunities lie And uh, Toronto, I think, has become, over the last decade or so, one of the premier cities of the world. I mean, the talent that's here, look at you two guys here, Mm -hmm. the people behind the camera. um, This is, you are the guys and others that are going to be taking this city, I think, into its golden age. Why don't you just take them to America? (laughs) Just just go, like, look, (laughs) guys. Do you get it? Do you guys get it now? You've been in a world pre-social media. And you've dealt with issues, and you've dealt with all these things, and now you're a social media star. How how do these two worlds? How are they? How are they similar, and how are they different? And how has that change been, and, and change affected you, and how you how you run politics? I guess I first presented myself publicly um, when I was in grade nine in high school and ran for student council, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, you know to to win that position, I had to I had to work with a lot of people. Was that a tough campaign to run? You know, that was basically it was shaking hands, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, face to face. That was a like. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you Pretty know, I, was a I played I played a lot of team sports: hockey uh, in the winter, ba- uh, baseball in the summer, football in the fall. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you uh, when you put those two things together, you know, student politics and and playing uh, a lot of team sports, mm-hmm. you know, you're with people, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I en- I enjoyed. I just simply enjoyed that that style of right. of relating uh, with people, and mm-hmm. it just seems to have. I, I was in student politics at university. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's just been a way of life for me, and mm-hmm. uh, I feel no change. Wow. So he's it, always had that personality, right? It's just so not, it comes you, natural. So you feel like whatever elements uh, uh, of being a politician or just just being able to relate to people in that sense in that world you're be you're able to translate that over into the social media world is what you're saying essentially um i think so mm-hmm. uh and um i'm you know i didn't start out saying i want to be a star right i want to really uh, you know be perceived as being yeah. successful yeah um it happened yeah. uh, and i'm happy with that of course um, uh, as well, my wife, <laughs> she's now used to when we're walking down the street or going to an event and people coming up and saying, Norm, Norm, or Six Dad, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they bring out the phone, she'll say, I'll take the photograph. Oh. <laughs> she knows. All right. 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 Loki loves it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if he was, uh, didn't become a politician and just became a social media star? <laughs> <laughs> just made vibes and like, IG videos. <laughs> when you're dead. <laughs> as, as great as all those things are, sometimes we get hit with a lot of criticism. I know us being on social media as well, mm-hmm. sometimes we've gotten hit with a lot of criticism. Canada is such a multicultural, diverse country. Now, speaking from personal experience, I've grown up in the community. I've grown up around people 
where we have shared a lot of elements from our backgrounds, from our traditions, from our like experiences with each other. And that's why we're able to get along with each other so well. Yeah, me too. Sure, <laughs> whatever. Being online, I've been hit with criticisms and, and one of those has been about um, taking from different cultures and incorporating them into mine or incorporating into the, a lot of the work I do. And I know you've been hit with a lot of the similar criticisms as, as well. How do you address that? If you had an opportunity to kind of address that, like what, what would you say about that? Well, very simply, bottom line, in a multicultural society, you build bridges rather than walls. You know, there's so much that that cultures can bring, you know, to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a buffet. Mm -hmm. And um, I think everyone should have the ability to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. My wife is Chinese, for example. My grandchildren are Chinese, uh, Caucasian, and Filipino. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy the... Uh, the cultural contact mm -hmm. um, that I have through my wife in the Chinese community, mm -hmm. uh, through my uh, uh, daughter-in-law in the Filipino community. Mm -hmm. Why would anyone object to culture sharing, you know, the, 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 the joy and the uh, insights mm -hmm. uh, that they can bring to others? Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, I think that uh, it's really important to uh, know what's what's going on out there mm -hmm. and this is what i think americans have to learn you don't have to be homogeneous mm -hmm. uh in uh, cultural makeup mm -hmm. uh, if you're multicultural just make sure that you respect the right. other cultures that's what it that's right. what it is. uh that you uh um have the ability to integrate them mm -hmm. into your lifestyle. Now, some people may not want to do that, mm -hmm. but that's on a personal level. But there should always be that ability to um, create um, sort of a, a heterogeneous um, enjoyment of the wonderful, I think, uh, society in which we live uh, in Canada and uh, in large part in the States. Mm -hmm. They just have a bit further to go. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, yeah. I'm just glad that. Just a bit, <laughs> just a little bit. I'm just glad you're not using your uh, Twitter account like our president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think this is a great point that you brought up because if, if there's like a, like a, like a white dude wearing a turban, be like, hey, aren't you, like, doesn't that upset you? Isn't that a cultural appropriation? And I think for me personally, it all simply just boils down to like. If if they like appreciate if they're appreciating and showing love and showing respect to to something that's a part of my culture, I have absolutely no problem with it. Like, I, in fact, I'm like I'm happy about it because I'm like, hey, finally, these people are embracing. There's like people that aren't a part of my culture that are embracing my culture and like showing love and showing respect to it. It's just a turban. It's, it's just it's <laughs> there's th that whole illusion of like. Uh, uh, that that fear and 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 the dissonance that's attached to it is kind of like erased, and them being able to embrace it, I think that's a great thing. Even when it comes to like Punjabi music or food or things like that, like these are things that I I want other people from different cultures to share. So I I personally, on that level, as long as it's done at a place of respect. Well, if you in in, in a multicultural society, um, you look for talent wherever you uh, mm -hmm. you know wherever you, you uh, can, and uh, in a multicultural society, that means 100% of the people uh, are eligible mm -hmm. to serve uh, uh, politically uh, and uh, in the cabinet. And um, uh, a good example of that diversity is uh, the defense minister of, mm -hmm. of Canada, yeah. um, a, a Sikh by cultural background, mm -hmm. wears his turban, mm -hmm. Uh, and yet he's proudly Canadian, fiercely Canadian. Yeah. Uh, and to have a man of that uh, importance with that cultural background and mm -hmm. military service, mm -hmm. um, I think that's fabulous. Yeah. Last night at, uh, at a, a, a Canada-China Canada uh, Council trade dinner uh, in Toronto, uh, the Minister of Small Business, uh, a female, and half the cabinet here in, in uh, Canada is female. Oh, wow. uh, she uh, is Southeast Asian uh, in origin as well. Mm 
uh, and uh, man, she, she made a she made a terrific speech. Uh, it was thoughtful. Uh, she displayed a perky, uh, exuberant personality. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a brief chance to chat with her uh, afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know when you see talent like that um, um, in public office. Um, you got to feel good about this country and the direction it's going. Yeah, right. absolutely. Hey, who's your defense minister? What do you call him? Uh, the Secretary of Arms? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Is that what it's called? So aggressive. <laughs> yeah, you guys have like, we have like such light. Well, defense minister. You guys are like the secretary of what is it? I don't even know what it is. Uh, I think it's of arms, right? Or, or, or I don't know. Is this, like is, this, is this nickname Mad Dog? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and ours is like hey, we call him Mad Dog yeah. in the states. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm I'm, uh, I'm sick by background. I wear a turban, but I love Canada. And then your guys just like welcome to the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture Mad Max. <laughs> like every, that's like that's, everyone in the cabinet. Everyone in the cabinet is the guys. That if, if an apocalypse happened, those would be the guys that would be in the front of the cars. With the guitar. <laughs> the guy with the guitar is your defense minister. That's who that guy is. What are your DMs like? Do you talk to a lot of people outside of Twitter and inside of Twitter? Um, not as often as you would think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a, a day job. Right. <laughs> you mean you, hey, you don't get to tweet all day? <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were a star. <laughs> You could you could lose yourself in the Twitterverse. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is so vast. He's lost himself. And yeah, poten I mean, and potentially right so engaging mm. uh, that you really could commit 100% of your time. Toronto Life did a profile on me a couple of years ago, and they counted up the number of tweets and divided by the number of days and concluded that uh, I tweet on average seven times a day. <laughs> wow. Now, there are, there are people who would tweet that before breakfast. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but... Uh, you know, I don't think the key is volume. Right. Uh, the key is to, uh, I think, to understand your audience. Yeah. Uh, to uh, address uh, their concerns, share with them in the joys that they that they mm -hmm. find in life. How do you feel about uh, our said president and his uh, the way he uses Twitter? Well, it, you know, uh, I mean, there are times when uh, I wish uh, for his own sake. <laughs> <laughs> That you didn't need to finish that. <laughs> said, he just said for his own sake. I'm like, I know this is. You shut that, up. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got to realize at times less is more. Right? Yeah. I feel like as soon as as soon as something bothers him, like he doesn't have a. I don't think he has anybody to talk to around him. B. I don't think he. I think he's like such a proud man that he doesn't want to talk to anybody. Else. He has no therapist. He has nobody, and he doesn't like understand how to like dissolve anytime he gets like angry it just goes straight to twitter and tweets that's that's one thing i measure a lot of people on social media is the amount of grace that they have online um because my my like core belief and like i've i've been is never to get emotional on the internet and i because i've been emotional on the internet when i was younger and like just use it as well i'm like oh my god this is unfair and like you sh we shouldn't be doing that, you know? Well, you know, I'll tell you what I, what I learned growing up in the age that I grew up in, mm -hmm. uh, before all the technological uh, uh, stuff occurred, mm -hmm. the revolution occurred, mm -hmm. and that is when you're really pissed off, when you're really angry, you take out a piece of paper, grab a pen, mm -hmm. and you write everything down like oh, crazy. That's the way it should And then when you're finished, you open a drawer, yeah. you put it in there, and you close the drawer. Yeah, and then you light the desk on fire. That's it. No, and you just... And you flee and you the country. And you dance around yeah, it with you five of your best friends. You walk away. And you sacrifice you a pig. walk away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did it differently. That was... <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's my outlet. You were heavily involved in the uh, the, the, the Drake and Meek Mill... Oh, uh, last year. Few, yeah. yeah, last year. Uh, what kind of motivated you to kind of step... Uh, which was hilarious, by the way, the fact that you did step in that... As deputy mayor, I had become increasingly familiar mm -hmm. uh, with Drake mm -hmm. and his impact on the city. Mm -hmm. uh, and from time to time, I would poke fun at him. Yeah. Um, uh, but <laughs> it's different. It's different. You know, um, inside the family, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you can uh, poke fun at each other. You mm -hmm. can criticize each other. But you don't mm -hmm. want anyone outside the family yeah. to do that. And here's Meek Mill, yes. uh, you know, dissing him. Mm -hmm. And what hit me was that Meek Mill uh, was two weeks away from bringing his show with Nicki Minaj to Toronto. Yeah. And I'm thinking, who the hell? <laughs> 
you know, does this. So yeah. in a very innocent way, I said to him, Meek, you're not, you know, you're not welcome. Yeah. yeah. And, and he took that very personally. And he took the yeah. bait. <laughs> <laughs> he took it. And so yeah. we, uh, we squared off. Uh, well, you guys fought? <laughs> and then we had a, 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 su a, su a succession yeah. right. of uh, tweets. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's what, that's what uh, really changed the, um, uh, the trajectory of, yeah. uh, of the account. Yeah, uh, yeah, went yeah. from 10,000 uh, followers to 100,000 wow. in inside the month. Wow, yeah. Uh, and uh, when I realized that there was an audience out there, a millennial audience, mm -hmm. Uh, I, my background's academic. I do, yeah. used to doing a lot of research. Mm -hmm. I began researching hip hop and rap uh, and uh, and millennials mm -hmm. because I thought to myself, if I'm going to have a conversation with them, I want to learn the language. Right. right. After a while, I felt sorry for him. So did I. You know, the, he's he's an example of uh, of prime example of getting emotional on the internet. Right. Like, cause he got it would he, he get mad about something like Drake not? I mean, sure there was like so, so many other layers behind it, but like one of the biggest things that we know is that it, like Drake didn't post his uh, album on Instagram or stuff like that. Like, who cares? Like that that whole thing st stemmed from him getting emotional on the internet, and then Norm came at him. You know what I mean? And then his life now his life is I don't know what he's out of nowhere. Oh man! Uh, no, I like me. Like I liked. I like to meek Mill. Like, I mean, as a rapper, I respect him, and I think he's a very talented rapper. But like, just, just like, what? Is this blasphemous? What I'm saying right now? <laughs> don't tell Drake, please. Don't tell Drake. <laughs> please, we're so sorry. Yeah. We'll cut um, this. <laughs> hey, I know where you live. Oh God. <laughs> meek Mill and Donald Trump. <sighs> the two. Meek Mill, Donald Trump, <laughs> Norm Kelly, and Drake <laughs> versus Norm Kelly, two on two basketball. Basketball. <laughs> Tag team wrestling match. <laughs> So before we before we wrap this up, uh, I mean, you know, we've we've done this interview, we've got some time. I mean, we knew each other a little mm. bit before this. You've got some ch a chance to meet Walid, and if it was between the just two boys, uh, and we were both randomly, I don't know how, but selected somehow, somehow, some way, <laughs> which I think could happen, very possible, uh, to be the leaders, the president of not just. America or Canada, but the world, the leaders of the free world. Not even world. a continent. Not even a continent, but the world. If you had to choose between me or Wally, who would uh, who would you choose? This is um, a serious issue. Yeah, this is. A, this You've is posed a tough question. This this whole interview was just so we could set up and, and ask this question. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I think there's got to be a, a scientifically mm. valid way of mm. determining. Uh, the answer to this question. Me. Yeah. Come just a bit closer. Okay. Okay, put your hands out. Okay. Both. Right. Oh, both hands. Okay. okay. One potato, two <laughs> potato, <laughs> three potato, four, five potatoes, six potatoes, seven potato, more. This is how the U.S. elections should have done. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we this would so have been much, so much easier. This would have been so much easier. So much <laughs> less <laughs> money would have been spent. Yeah. God damn so it. Much, we're millions of dollars are going through these campaigns. Yeah. Hi, I'm future world leader and your best candidate, just me, Marina. And if I win, I will let Jimmy Fallon touch my turban. <laughs> Play around with it, you know? Didn't even try it on. The other guy doesn't even wear a turban. What's Jimmy Fallon gonna touch? His hair? <laughs> Too late! Trump already did that. I'm hot, fresh, and you. And I'm open to different people touching my culture. This advertisement was brought to you and paid for by Just Me's in New York. My opponent, Just Me, is too old. Don't you want a candidate that's cool and hip like your boy here? I know all the emojis, like this one. And this one. And this one. If you vote for me, I'll keep it. Hashtag safe on these turned up sheets. Check out this sick trick. Okay, so what I'm old, I'm a 67 year old man, but I'm mature enough to know that dabbing, which is the indulgement of opiates, and litting, which is causing fire to this indulgement of the opiates, is wrong. Wally Muhammad wants your kids to get drunk off of opiates. I'm, dra I'm draining, I'm banning all drugs and alcohols. No more, not in my world. Get out of here, stupid drug. Get out of here, you dumb. 
world leader candidate Wali Muhammad here. And I'm here to tell you that I support small businesses, especially like video stores. We need more video stores here in our community. What happened to all the video stores? We had Blockbuster, Video Number One, Star Video. Vote for me and I'll bring back all the video stores today. This ad was endorsed by Wali Muhammad. Oh, you just caught me with many of my children that I've adopted from various parts of the world where they just throw away children. Just like Wally Muhammad, who's gonna throw away your dreams down a drain pipe. This advertisement was brought to you. Now my opponent, Jug Me Sick, thinks he could just walk in with his nice fancy suits and his fun turban and his this beautiful smile that he puts on every day. <laughs> Fuck you! You're not cool, you're not sharp. All that love and cur- Oh, wait, it's not Jagmeet. <laughs> oh, my bad. This ad was endorsed by Waleed Muhammad. Hi, I'm your candidate, just me, Lorena, and my name is not Jagmeet saying, why does everybody keep getting I don't even look like, I don't, I don't, I'm not even good looking. I don't even have a good smile. My suits are all cheap. My turban is just black. I'd love to be Jigmeet. But I'm not. And I don't think I'd ever. I don't think I ever could be. He's just. He's just perfect. And, you know, just because I have a turban and beard too, it just. Everyone always gets me confused with him. And for a moment, that brings me some sort of happiness because. I feel like. I, people think I could be here for. Just a second, a half a second. <sighs> ha ha, those are crocodile tears. I'm way better. I'm your world leader, bitch. Nobody's on my level. I can run your world better than any, any of these cucks can run your world. I'm the world cuck champion. This advertisement was brought to you and paid for by Just Be Stad. Hey, vote for me, you motherfuckers. If you don't fuck vote for me, I'll fuck Vote for me, Wally Mom, because if you don't, I'll fucking kill your entire family. That's why right. you fucking heard it here. That's why right. everyone here, I'll kill your family if you don't vote for me, alright? Hi, I'm Norm Kelling. I absolutely do not endorse either of these two candidates, and neither should you.